So by now, I'm sure you're all familiar with my new to me 2009 Jaguar Vanden Pla. And today, on this episode, we are gonna be doing some more maintenance on it to bring it back to its former glory. So those of you that are new to the channel and maybe you stumbled across this as your first video here, uh, I recently purchased a 2009 Jaguar XJ Vanden Pla as a non-runner and I want to bring it back to life. Now, what's special about these cars? 2009 is the end of the platform uh, for this chassis, the X350 or X358 Jaguar, and it's the last that has that classic XJ look. And in the United States, the 2000 model year is extremely, extremely rare. They did not send many over here. So when I had the opportunity to purchase this one, even as a non-runner, I was all over it. So welcome to another episode of Low Tech Garage, and we are going to be getting stuck in on the XJ today. If you are new to the channel, please, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. It really allows me to continue to create and share this Jaguar and other car content with you. And it costs nothing and takes just a moment of your time to hit that subscribe button hit that like button and shoot me a comment. Let me know what you think about these videos, what's helpful to you, what you might wanna see on the channel, and also what I can do better to make this content more engaging and enjoyable for you too. And with that, we're gonna get the Mustang right next to me here out of the way. I gotta push it kind of over to one side so I can back the XJ in and I can talk you through the plans for the service that's getting completed today. certainly entertaining uh, yeah Florida summer is definitely here and you can tell by how uh, glistening I am I have no AC in here and it is definitely mid-afternoon with those thunderstorms rolling in so it is lovely and warm in here but needless to say look what we've got and that's a really cozy shop again just when I thought I had it all cleared out as well that should give me some room to uh, Get the wheel off the back of the XJ. We're gonna put the other r not strut in. I was able to source another set actually for a really good deal. Uh, the car had three r knots on it and then one outlier. And the car just rode weird and I was set on having a full matching set of the r knots. The r not is a premium aftermarket brand air strut. Uh, and you know, they have generally good reviews overall in the community. So with that, I'm gonna start with that. We're gonna get that back wheel off, get that rear strut out, um, and I'll kind of show you the comparison side by side. I know I have done a video on kind of the removal and replacement, so I won't get too in the weeds on that with this. And then once that's back together, we're gonna to jump to the front and we're gonna give the car a much needed oil change as well. This is really what I noticed with this uh, back strut. You can actually see the rear is riding kind of low and I can tell this corner is very wallowy and it really feels like the damper inside is basically non-existent. Uh, sometimes when I pull into like uh, places that have a big curve where it goes like this, um, basically if I park the car shortly after, the, the strut is very compressed and low. And then when I come back out, the kind of air ride system has realized, oh, I'm way too low and then it brings itself up. Um, I believe if you had a damper, the damper would just kind of push the car back to its kind of closer to ride height and we won't be completely dependent on the airbag. Uh, so one of the other reasons other than just having a matching set that I wanted to get this thing swapped out. Well, you guys 
probably see I'm getting uh, kind of good at removing these. It probably only took 15 minutes. Um, this is some aftermarket brand, kind of almost like a Chinese knockoff um, from what I can tell. When I push down on the damper at the end, it's kind of making like a squelchy noise, which indicates to me that the seal is going on it. Uh, and honestly would explain the ride height too. So I won't get into too much detail, but you can see here, I've got the r not brand right here. Uh, so I'm gonna try and get that back installed. It's a little more tricky to put in on your own because you gotta line up all the studs at the top and kind of get it to stay in place while you get a nut on it. Uh, but I'm gonna work on that and start putting the car back together. Oh, holy cow. It is really freaking hot in here today. It's probably about 95 degrees outside and I'm gonna say it's at least 95 degrees inside. So uh, yeah, sorry I'm so disgusting. But let me show you where we got. Well, it's on. Uh, yeah, the suspension is super low and that is to be expected as the uh, replacement strut is not connected up to any type of air or anything like that. Um, so when we do start the car back up, I expect it to raise back up to the ride height it thinks it should be at. Those that watched my last video in the trunk, we were all tightened back up. Airline is back in as well as the uh, ride height kind of sensor. I think that's actually the pressure sensor if I stand corrected. I think the ride height centers on the uh, control arm. But you get my point. Everything is back together in here as well. And that means it's time to get on with the oil change. So I get to move up to the front of the car and actually it's a little bit cooler in the shop here. So that's kind of nice. But under the hood, it's your lovely little 4.2 Jag V8 cranking out about 300 horsepower. Honestly, these are great motors. Um, you know, especially these later generation ones, they are an insanely smooth running V8, plenty of power, um, really make it a nice package overall. And I got myself this nice Bosch filter and some Mobile One. So I got to raise the front of the car up. There's a pretty big under tray on these. I remember this from my last one that takes quite a few uh, screws and nuts and bolts to pull out the way so I can access the drain plug and the um, oil filter. And honestly, this will be my first time looking underneath the car. So what I'll do, I'll get the car raised up. I'll mess around and get this uh, under tray out of the way and then I'll bring you guys underneath the car and let's see what is uh, good and maybe not so good under there.
we have the under tray off. Let's see what's going on under here. Oh, looks a little gross. Definitely gonna have to do some cleanup and investigation under here. It's interesting. I'm wondering if it's just the oil pan gasket. So it actually looks like the cooler itself might not be that bad. But the best bet, hit this all with brake clean so it's nice and clean, and then keep an eye on it. Well, I'm still sweating my butt off here, but uh, I got the under tray out as you saw, uh, drained the oil, and to my surprise, it had a JAG oil filter on it. That kind of aligns with uh, what the person I bought the car from had told me that they did actually maintain the car at the dealership. And honestly, after some of the issues they had with it, that's why they decided to part ways with it because it was just getting too expensive. Uh, but to my surprise, and a pleasant one at that, it's got the JAG oil filter um, so that's a nice thing it means it's definitely probably been looked after for the majority of its life um, i have got the new oil filter on i have sprayed down all the uh, kind of oil residue on the pan so that next time i come under here to do a service i can see with a little better kind of eye on where this uh, oil leak or weep is coming from i kind of suspect maybe the oil pan gasket i know on my previous x350 i did have to replace that uh, it does not look bad. It's just kind of like residue at this point, but I definitely want to keep an eye on it. Um, I have poured about six and a half quarts of Mobile One in, um, and now I am going to wrestle the under tray back on. Uh, I won't take you through that whole process as it's kind of slow. There's lots of weird screws and bolts and all that stuff. Um, but we will get the car lowered back down here in a minute and fire her up and hopefully the rear suspension raises up and we can check the oil level and top it off and we will be one step closer to having the perfect x358 all right well the car is back on the ground i am a complete mess uh, but i thought i'd show you something fun with these cars with air suspension and slightly terrifying if it's your first time doing this uh, but i have the car off the jack stands it is on its own four wheels under trays in and I'm basically ready to hook the battery back up uh, and start the car up and check the oil level but I thought I showed you this because it looks pretty crazy. So maybe we expect the ride height to be a little low here but as we go to the front we have some uh, monster truck action going right here. Give you another perspective but she is super jacked up in the front on this front side, I would say we're a little bit more normal. Then back here, we are slammed. So I'm going to hook the battery up, get my hands a wash real quick and start the car up and see if we can catch the suspension figuring itself out. Uh, always fun to watch that. And we will also check the oil level to make sure it's where we want it. I have a suspicion that my uh, GoPro died, so I wanted to show this. She did air up. Gonna need a bit of a test drive to get everything to level out, but good first sign. And equally, the monster truck ride height on this side seemed to uh, figure itself out a little bit too. So that about sums it up for this video. Um, I do have to put the trunk back together, uh, all the kind of carpeted parts. Um, I am probably gonna take the car, drive it around a little bit, and just make sure everything's basically working as expected. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get the carpet put back in the trunk properly. I think I mentioned that this seemed to be thrown together back there and it kind of looked a mess. Uh, so I'll cover that in my next upcoming video, kind of how to put that back properly and make it look how it would have left the factory as well. But with that, thank you for coming along on the journey with me today to get a fresh oil change in the car so we know when it was last done. 
and replacing that last air strut so we have our knot suspension on all four corners. So that means in the upcoming videos, we're gonna hook up the dealer software and recalibrate the suspension to get the ride height dialed in exactly how we want it. Um, that might mean actually lowering the car just a fraction, uh, but really go through all the modules, see what's going on and uh, you know get everything, any bad codes, anything weird cleared out. So the, um, the electronics on the car are behaving as good as they should as well. And as I always say, if you're new to the channel, if this is your first time coming here and you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing. I'm really trying to grow the channel so I can bring you more and more content on cars like this, this, and this, and some of the other ones that are not here today and sharing that with you all. And when I say share that, I wanna teach you some of the ways to maintain these cars uh, affordably and also so you can come along with that journey with me as well. So until the next episode, thanks so much for watching.